Hello. Um, Andrew Bernard here, Bernie from Innovative Enterprise. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, um, well, I'm basically going to condense my TEDx talk, which is called Engineered Random Opportunities to Succeed, down to about four or five minutes, probably be longer than me. Um, but I really want to just get you to think about your career journey. Was it... Was it kind of really straight and planned and level and even and did you do this thing and then that thing and then the other and did it go completely to plan? Or along the way were there a number of different kind of pathways that led you off in different directions? Maybe you didn't get the results you wanted or and then you kind of drifted off to another college that you didn't want to go to or maybe you worked for your mum's, uh, your mate's mum's uh, business and you ended up, I don't know, going into curtain manufacturing or into... Um, a carpentry or something that you never ever thought you would do because of someone you met along the way or something that happened to you along the way did you end up moving to a city you never would have gone to because you met someone at university and then kind of went off in that direction because I think a lot of life is is based on random occurrences things that we can't always predict I'm just going to give you a little kind of overview of, of my career path I grew up down south um, I went to a grammar school. My parents moved to get me into a grammar school, so I was immediately kind of wrenched from primary into a, a kind of group of people that I didn't know because there were only two of us that went to the primary school, uh, from the primary to the grammar. And so I met a whole new group of friends. Wasn't really happy, though. I didn't really like it. My, um, I don't know, my attitude was that it's not really fair. Um, and then I, I did all right. I got kind of nine or ten uh, GCSE O levels. And then all my friends went to college. They were allowed to go to college to be with their, their, you know, be with their mates, get treated a bit more like adults. They could wear their own clothes, and obviously, because I was at a boys' school, I was a bit irritated that they were all going to go and be taught um, in mixed classes. So they were being taught with with girls, um, and that was one of the only things I was obsessed with. But my parents said, "No, we moved to get you into that school, so you're going to have to stay there." So I immediately kind of kicked off and. Let's say it didn't go very well. There were there were four things I was really into that were not studying. That was football, became an Arsenal fan and used to go every weekend. Um, fashion, so I had to wear the right clothes and we got into all sorts of scams and problems and basically I got arrested for nicking clothes when I was uh, 16, 17. Um, also fighting because, you know, the 80s and football, I was just horrible. I kind of used to used to kind of hang around the coattails of all the really hard lads and thinking we were really hard. But actually we weren't. And the other, the fourth thing I was really into was girlfriends. Um, and I, so I was just really obsessed with myself, really, and getting the most out of it. During that time, I obviously wasn't particularly studying very well. I wasn't focusing on my um, three A-levels. In fact, I was down to two A-levels because I had a big argument with the English teacher about... Um, well, not reading in the book, but I pretended I'd read the book. So I got thrown off English. So by the time my A-level results came around, I wasn't that hopeful. So I went home. I didn't open mine when everyone else was jumping around at school going, I'm going to London. I'm going to go and study medicine. I'm off to Durham to study geography and all these kind of things. I just stayed. I got my envelope and went home and opened it at home. And I realised that I'd got an E and a U at A-level from a grammar school that my parents had moved me into. So, you know, things were not starting out as well as they they thought they were or as well as I thought they would. Along the way, I also found out that I'd been adopted at 17, which obviously I used to kind of go, oh, my life's been a lie and kind of spent a lot of time angry, really, angry with everybody else and saying it's not fair. And But actually, the only person I ended up punishing was myself because the results were were terrible let's be honest they were awful um and how many places in the uk do you think would allow me to go to study at higher education with an e and a u at a level two one was huddersfield poly one was north east wales institute of higher education which i'm guessing you've never heard of which is of course where i ended up going um because I needed to get out of the toxic situation that I'd kind of caused for myself. Every time I went out in town, um, I'd end up in a fight because we would never back down from a fight. So I was, you know, people always wanted to fight me. Also, I'd kind of get off with girls that I knew was going out with somebody else. So I'd get a snog and a fight at the end of the night. And there were loads of, you know, there were like queues of people that wanted to, to beat us all up. We were just horrible. So I got out of the town um, and moved to North Wales, which was quite a shock in, in all honesty. Um, a very small town, it'd just been kind of 
damaged by the steelworks closing so it was pretty kind of it was a pretty down place generally but it was the place that I allowed myself to to learn I allowed myself to believe that I had a, a mind that I could use um, and eventually I, I did okay and, and at college I met somebody we ended up moving to Chester and um, see there's another random thing I was from down south moved to North Wales um, ended up living in Chester got a job um, on the Wirral at uh, Milever Brothers in Port Sunlight so Unilever there's another kind of random thing and that was a friend of ours I said why don't there's some jobs going at our place why don't you apply I then met my now wife Val in Manchester when I was um, meeting at going over to Manchester regularly at weekends to, to be with my mate Joe who was at university there and and from there I we we met we moved in um, bought a house in in Salford I then got a job in Salford through a friend of hers um, and from there I ended up working at Salford University there Lancaster University and then I had a massive realization when I was about 38 I was just leaving work and you're going to know this feeling you know when you've been in a hot building all day and the the doors open and you get that draft of beautiful cold air on your face and right there that hit me that was the best part of my day so what I'd done after being such an idiot at school and kind of having to recover from that I'd basically spent 17 years drifting through the different jobs obviously I'd, I'd got married we'd had a couple of girls a couple of daughters we'd moved a couple of times and now we were living in the Lake District South Lake District Everything was looking great on the surface, but actually inside I was massively unhappy because I'd just drifted. And so my message through this whole very long life story that, um, that I've just given you, um, which is actually designed here by a brilliant cartoonist called Simon Heath. You'll find him on Twitter. He's a brilliant artist. He's basically drawn my career path out for me. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do as a result of this, there's, there's a couple of things I want you to think about. Number one. What were your plans when you were at school or college and how did they work out? Number two, who threw your dice for you? Was it you or did you meet someone? Did you have an amazing opportunity? Did, did happenstance kind of end up you, taking you to a different country or a different job role or did you have a realisation as part of your career? And that's the second thing. And thirdly, who could you help? A lot of people's opportunities come when they're offered things from other people. So could you offer some students in your local school some work experience? Could you go in and volunteer at a local college to, to help them understand what you do? Just think about who helped you and then I want you to think about who you could send the ladder back down for. So that's what I mean by engineering random opportunities to succeed. These things kind of don't happen by magic. Someone has to take the opportunity to make them happen. And, you know, for every young person who's struggling with who they're going to be, where they're going to get to and what they're going to do, that difference could be you. So that's the one thing I want you to take away. What could you do to help young people? Because let's face it, all of us had some help. How are we going to pay it forward and how are we going to send the ladder back down for somebody else? Thanks.